Hi guys, this is O Level Chemistry, paper 11, June 2022, question 1. A scientist needs to add approximately 100 cm cube of water to each of 50 large beakers. The scientist needs to fill the beakers as quickly as possible. Which method should be used? Okay, a 50 cm cube burette should be used twice for each beaker. Now, the problem with the 50 cm cube burette is that it very slowly fills any apparatus that is used uh, to pour uh, the liquid from it into. So this is not going to be quick. A 100 cm cube gas syringe should be used once for each beaker. A gas syringe is an apparatus for measuring volumes of gas, not liquids. Next, a 25 cm cube graduated pipette should be used four times for each beaker. Again, a pipette very slowly delivers the liquid that is filled into it into the container it is being emptied into. So by the process of elimination, option D should be the correct option, but let's look at it. A 100 cm cube measuring cylinder should be used once for each beaker. Yes, a measuring cylinder can be filled easily as well as emptied easily. And the other thing is, uh, the question said approximately 100 cm cube of water. We don't need accuracy. A measuring cylinder is used to measure approximate volumes, not accurate volumes. Accurate volumes are taken by using a burette or a pipette, whereas approximate volumes by a measuring cylinder. So considering everything, option D is the correct option for this question. Question two, four mixtures, each containing two substances are shown in the table. The two substances need to be separated and collected. Which row is correct? So copper to sulfate and water. And the separation method is chromatography. Chromatography is not a separation method for copper sulfate dissolved in water because copper sulfate is soluble. It will be a solution of copper sulfate. Chromatography separates different substances that do not mix with each other. So this is wrong. B, methanol and ethanol. Both are alcohols. So they will mix with each other. The process that is mentioned here is evaporation. No, they can be separated by fractional distillation. Next, oxygen and nitrogen. And the process uses fractional distillation. Yes. Fractional distillation of liquid air is carried out to separate oxygen and nitrogen. So this is correct. And D is sand and barium sulfate filtration. No, sand is not soluble. Neither is barium sulfate. So filtration is useless for separating sand and barium sulfate. So option C is the correct option for this question. Question three, two samples of colorless solution are tested separately with aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia and the results are recorded. A white precipitate is formed with two drops of NaOH. This precipitate dissolves in excess of NaOH. So a white precipitate with NaOH but it dissolves. So this could be aluminum ion or it could be zinc ion because both of them form a white precipitate with sodium hydroxide which dissolves in excess of NaOH. Next, a white precipitate is formed with two drops of ammonia. The precipitate dissolves in an excess of ammonia. The only ion in which the precipitate dissolves on addition of excess ammonia and one that forms a white precipitate is zinc. So this confirms the presence of zinc ions. What can be deduced from this result? The NN present is chloride. There was never any test carried out for any anion. So whatever anion they mentioned, we cannot uh, be sure that that anion is present or not because we have not tested for it. B, the anion present is not chloride. No test for anion. C, the cation present is aluminum. If aluminum was present, then a white precipitate would form with ammonia, which would not dissolve. So not aluminum. The cation present is zinc. Yes. So option D is the correct option for this question. Question four, 
which row correctly describes changes in the particles when a substance freezes okay arrangement of particles particles become more ordered yes so option c and d stayed particles become less ordered so c and d get eliminated now we are left with only a and b energy change in the particles so particles gain energy or particles lose energy when something freezes it cools and cooling gives off energy so energy is lost not gained so this makes option b the correct option for this question question 5 ethyl amine gas and hydrogen chloride gas react together to form a white solid ethyl amine hydrochloride at which position in the tube would a ring of solid white ethyl amine hydrochloride form okay so we have at two ends of this tube cotton wools one soaked in ethyl amine and the other soaked in hcl so we are talking about movement of gases so this depends on their mr so if we talk about mr for ethyl amine c2 h5 nh2 the mr value would be 12 into 2 plus 5 plus 14 plus 2 so this gives us a value of 24 plus 5 29 31 45 so the mr of ethyl amine is 45 whereas for hcl it would be 1 plus 35.5 which gives us 36.5 so the mass of ethyl amine is higher than the mass of hcl so this ring would form closer to the cotton wool soaked in ethyl amine which makes option a the correct option for this question question six two particles have the symbols fe2 positive and co3 positive which statement about these particles is correct they contain the same number of electrons so we need to find out the number of particles in each of these species so fe2 positive has a proton number of 26 and a nuclear number of 54 whereas the other ion co3 positive has a proton number of 27 and a nuclear number of 59 so number of electrons present would be 26 minus 2 because the charge is positive 2 so electrons are 24 the protons present are 26 as given by the proton number and the neutrons present would be the nucleon number 54 minus the proton number 26 which gives us a value of 28 so this is for fe2 positive now repeating the same procedure for co3 positive the number of electrons present would be 27 minus 3 this gives us 24 for protons the proton number is 27 and for neutrons we have the nucleon number 59 from which we will subtract 27 this gives us a number of neutrons as 32 so now we have calculated the particles for each of the species present now let's look at the options they contain the same number of electrons so electrons here are 24 and here are also 24 so option a is correct option b they contain the same number of neutrons for iron it's 28 for cobalt it's 32 so not the same they contain the same number of protons for iron it is 26 for uh, cobalt it is 27 not the same and they do not contain the same number of protons neutrons or electrons the number of electrons is the same so this statement also is incorrect so a is the correct option for this question Question 7. Two isotopes of chlorine are Cl35 and Cl37. Using these isotopes and C12 and H1, how many different relative molecular masses are possible for the compound with the molecular formula C2H3Cl3? So, however many molecular formula are possible, the mass of C2H3 would remain the same because there is only one isotope of carbon and one isotope of hydrogen involved. So, we are left with three chlorine isotopes so 
if we look at the number of combinations possible, that is going to be four. And how it's going to be four, we are going to look at the masses of each of the isotopes present in each combination. So if we talk about the first possibility, we have all three isotopes being Cl35. In another possibility, two isotopes will contain Cl35. In the third possibility, only one isotope will contain Cl35. And in the fourth possibility, none of the isotopes will contain Cl35. Similarly, as far as Cl37 is concerned, in possibility one, we have all three containing Cl37. In the second possibility, we have two containing the Cl37 isotope. In the third possibility, we have only one Cl37 isotope present. And in the fourth possibility, there is none Cl37 isotope present. So these are the four possibilities. And this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question eight. Which statement about the substances at room temperature and pressure is correct? Let's look at these substances. W is an alloy. Uh, X is an ionic solid. Y is a macromolecule. And Z is ethanol. Okay. Now, W and X conducts electricity. W does. X also does conduct. No way. W is an alloy. W does not. X conducts electricity. Now here, when we talk about alloy, this is an alloy of a metal and a non-metal because one of the uh, circle here is a huge, the gray one and the other is a small one. So conducting electricity is not one of the properties here. Okay, B, W and Y are elements. Y a, is a macromolecule. It's, it's, it looks like the structure of SiO2. So, or it could just be diamond. And diamond is pure carbon. So, Y could be an element, but W is definitely not an element. C, X and Z dissolve in water. X is an ionic solid. It may or may not dissolve in water. And Z dissolves in water. It is ethanol. So because X can and cannot both. No, but in fact, they've mentioned the ions. Lithium chloride. It will dissolve in water. It will dissolve in water. It's a chloride of lithium. So option C is the correct option. And D, Y and Z have low melting points. Z does have low melting point. Y is a macromolecule. It has a very high melting point. So option C is the correct option for this question. Question nine. A piece of magnesium reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. The resulting solution is then evaporated, leaving a solid residue of magnesium chloride. Which statement is correct? A covalent solid is formed in this process. No, ionic solid. Each chlorine atom gains one electron in this pro process. No. Hydrochloric acid has chlorine in the form of Cl negative ion and magnesium chloride has chlorine in the form of Cl negative ion. Chlorine does not change during this reaction. The form of chlorine. Next. Each magnesium atom loses only one electron in the process. No. Magnesium is converted into Mg2 positive ion. It loses two electrons. Next, molecules of an element are formed during the reaction. Yes, the element present was magnesium and the molecule that it forms is magnesium chloride. So this statement is correct, making option D the correct option for this question. Question 10, which dot and cross diagram represents carbon dioxide? Okay. So in carbon dioxide, we have carbon with a double bonded oxygen on one end and another double bonded oxygen on the other end. These are the atoms, electrons, sorry, of carbon. And these are the electrons of oxygen. 
Now, oxygen being in group six has six outermost electrons. So two of them are present in the covalent bonds. So we are left with four electrons on each oxygen atom. So now we compare this structure to the given options. In A, they have given three electrons here on carbon, whereas there are no three electrons in our structure. So A is wrong. In B, they have shown a double bond with the left oxygen atom, but a single bond with the right oxygen atom. So B is wrong. In C, there is a double bond on the left, a double bond on the right, no unbonded electrons on carbon and two pairs of unbonded electrons on each oxygen atom. So this structure is correct. D, they have a single bond between carbon and oxygen on both sides. So the structure is wrong. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C.